Hello. This video is going to be about uh, joining up some motion capture data to this rigged character. Uh, it's rigged, meaning it's got a skeleton in it um, of joints that can be recognised by other skeletal systems. And uh, I actually rigged it in Mixamo. So I made the simple mesh, uploaded it to Mixamo, and uh, using the uh, very simple to follow quick uh, tools there, managed to get it sort of auto rigged in a couple of minutes flat. Okay, so you can download your Mixamo rigged characters uh, in FBX format, and that means they load up in Motion Builder because FBX is Motion Builder's native format. And um, the reason we're in Motion Builder is, of course, that uh, the motion capture data also comes as FBX, which makes joining the motion capture data onto our skeleton much easier. But the first part of the process is to characterize that figure there so that its skeleton is recognized by Motion Builder's sort of skeleton correlation system. Okay, so we're relating the parts of the skeleton to the uh, um, skeleton that Motion Builder understands. So there's two ways to do that. The first one, um, which I want to uh, show you quickly, is the drag and drop simple thing that actually works first off with Mixamo. Um, so down here in the asset browser, um, I, by the way, I've set this up so that my content of stuff is also, my list of stuff is also showing up here as well. So this is an actual folder. If you want to do that for yourself, you can right click somewhere in here and do add favorite path. And that means that all your working files will show up. Um, so it's a good idea to bung them in a folder and have them all in the right, all in the same place. Of course, it's showing up on my subfolders as well. Um, so uh, that being that, that's the, my folders. And uh, then below that, there's the stuff that my, uh, Motion Builder builds in by default, which isn't really in folders, I don't think. Um, but so under this template section, we've got one called characters, and we could just lob one of these characters, drag and drop, onto our skeleton. I'm just going to make it so the skeleton is visible. Um, sometimes you just want to see everything, so uh, um, there's the mesh and the skeleton showing up in x ray mode. But in this case, we want to um, make it easier to select just the skeleton for a, a while. So I'm going to invisibilize the mesh so we can just see the model. So I'm going to get this template and just drag and drop it onto the top bone of the skeleton, which is the hip bone. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, at this point, it's decided there's missing bones. Um, so we're going to have to do it the long way anyway. OK, um, if it works straight off and you see green bones all over this character, green everything, and this comes out as a tick on a green circle, then you can lock the character and that makes it characterized. Then all you need to do is save it. Um, but in this instance, I need, I need to do the slightly longer version anyway. OK, so the way it works is we start by selecting on our kind of source character. And then we choose the bones we want to go into which slot. Uh, we've got mirror matching on, which means if I do this thigh here, it will automatically do the right hand side. So that speeds up the process somewhat. Now, another reason why the character may not be validatable is that the um, key parts of it 
are not in the right orientation. So it's a little bit fussy about the T-pose and the straightness of the legs, straightness of the arms, and the fact that the arms should be facing all the way down. And as we can see, the, the uh, one I've chosen here um, of my many different versions of this, um, it's giving an amber result on the arms. So that might take some um, rectification. Uh, quite often, although it says that the green bone is right and the upper arm and the air hand is wrong, quite often it's actually this bone that needs adjusting on the character. Um, I'll just complete the rest of the bone matching. And then I get to sorting out the orientation on the arm. Now, these uh, individual views will work as long as you take account of the bones that you've already allotted elsewhere. So there's one neck bone in this case. As you can see, it's set up for uh, characters which might be bipedal, but not necessarily um, humanoid. And as there's only one neck bone, that's all we need to fix up. So, so now we've got a validation status of uh, warning. The right arm not parallel, left arm not parallel to the x-axis. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. We could go to layout, or not layout, I want a view, view a layout. We'll go to two panes and make this view into the top view. So view orthographic and produce a top control and T actually. Okay, so we go in nice and uh, close here. Um, that's the one. You can use these controls um, to move around various uh, viewports, but I'm noticing that uh, they just get a little bit um, uh, detached, and then it messes up my the view of my cursor. So I'm using left or right mouse button. And control or shift. So that was a left mouse button and control, I think. So now if I rotate this, now you can use uh, move. Oops, so I'm not speedy view. You can use move to say grab this hand and then move that hand back to straighten the arm up. But it, every time you do that, you are of course. Um, changing the length of the joint or the length of, between the joints um, which over time could end up with, with you massively disproportionating the uh, bits of the skeleton so the way to preserve the proportionality is to use rotate As you can see, that's gone way out of axis. Quick bit of undo. Now, once this does eventually go straight you get an instant sign um, that it's valid so I'm just going to do the next one you can see that not absolutely rigidly straight there's just a tiny bit of bend there 
so it's not as unforgiving as uh, you could very easily sort of presume. So uh, uh, yeah, so that one's done. I've just got to move over to the uh, other side now. So uh, try to get away with a quick uh, interface pan and uh, do the same for this arm. So uh, half a rotate. Oh, look at that. So uh, we've got the tick. We can now lock character. Um, it says we want to have it set to a biped control rig at some point but uh, now we've got that character if we just have a look under the scene we can see we've got um, char which is the name I gave to the mesh then the Mixamo rig of uh, joints which is the skeleton you see in the view there And we've also got this extra bit, which you may not have noticed creeping in here, which is under the characters. We've got a character, and uh, this character is, of course, um, at the moment relating to this skeleton. But the skeleton and the character are still two different things. Okay, now that's locked together, and that's a... Um, a kind of single identifiable thing which we can uh, uh, now start relying on within Motion Builder to be able to ease some of the relationships. Okay, so we're going to go um, save this. Save as kind of at the earliest opp opportunity, which means then you can uh, not worry too much about um, overwriting your perfect character from out of Mixamo. Now I'm going to leave the uh, visibility of the um, mesh off. And because I've had several goes at this, I've got the same character name again, so I'm just going to the same file name, which I can uh, safely overwrite. Okay, so um, we're now going to open a uh, a file with our motion capture in, which again is something I've been visiting frequently. So this is going to be, um, we're accepting all of the open options, just as you accepted all of the save options. Um, so this is going to be um, the way our motion capture da data comes off the uh, system and it exports in FBX format which is good because it means we can see the uh, FBX skeleton plus we have a meshed object. Now the meshed object is, uh, in motion builder terms, it's an actor. So it's not a full character as such, um, but it is demonstrating how a mesh would be taken control over by these bones for a kind of standard human figure whatever that is but I say meshed object because it's composed of several different individual bits of meshes and um, even the, the leg is kind of broken up halfway along bones or oh, that's one big kneecap okay now I'm going to rotate this view around a bit because we want to see what the motion capture data looks like because I've opened the file, it's got rid of all of that character that I just made, but I did save that off, so we can get it back in a few moments. Um, motion capture data is represented by these markers, which are the places of the markers re relative to the skeleton it's created. 
um, from the actor person wearing a mocap suit. Um, there are some anomalies in the in the motion. Um, so the marker set uh, is a sort of named object, but it's also if I select this marker here, it turns green. It tells me there which one I've got selected as well. And if I expand the uh, C3D optical, we can see it's J Anim head one. Now I know there's 37 markers from the mocap suit, and I can see here that the they all have names, and then at 38, there's a load of ones with a number but no kind of tie to anything. These are likely to have originated because the um, motion capture setup is highly attuned to reflective objects. So anything metallic with a shiny corner it may well lead to a marker being established. And uh, in most cases, it's not a problem, but occasionally and we can see evidence of that in this. If I just uh, sort this out so uh, when the character starts moving, you can see sort of the extent of the motion. OK, um, we should see these kind of flitting around a bit. So we start in the T-pose, do a particular action, and then end up in the T-pose. Okay, and towards the end, if I just scrub over that, you can see there are some fairly critical things that happen to the figure. Now, the treatment to that is for another video. Okay, you can see that the hand moves off, everything else seems okay, and then a little bit further on, all sorts of crazy stuff happens on the legs. So a few things to look out for in a, at a future occurrence. But these markers, 38 to uh, the last one in the list, we can just select those and hold and shift and clicking. They turn green. And we can go delete, confirm. No accidental deletes with the delete key on this, thankfully. Um, this ball here is one of the, uh, well, it's the master object or the parent object for all these um, actual markers. So this means we could move this mocap around in the world space um, if we wanted to. Now you can see that that stays still and the, the motion kind of passes over it. If nothing else, it's a good sort of centering device for the, the uh, situation of this run of action. OK, so I'm going to fold that up um, and have a look at what else is in here. We should have an actor. So the actor is this um, mesh figure, effectively. You'll notice we've got a sort of um, crude looking representation of a skeleton, but this is really just a notional helper objects that map the points where the joints are, because that's really what the skeleton is. Um, no need for the bones, really. OK, so um, this is the uh, the base motion and it's attached to a figure but really you've got to view the figure as being something that just helps us visualize the motion so it helps us see what's likely to happen to our character but because the mesh that we're making is generally a single mesh we can't expect little bits of our character to fly off in any way Okay, so I'm going back to 
my folder and I have to dismiss eight or so of these stupid warnings. Okay, so um, now I want to open the um, character figure into this scene and get it to relate to the animation. I'm first going to save as though. Just got to remember which one it is. Uh, Probably that one. In any case, that will do. Okay, so I've named it after the Mixmo Motion Builder Prowl. Yeah, Motion Builder Prowl Two. So uh, whatever, it's going to be called that now, and that's just the way it is. So it's um. Prowl 2 having been through Motion Builder um, and now it's time to drop in the uh, character we just made which is that one I think so if you set your uh, folder up here you can drag and drop this in which makes the process much simpler because as I drop it in I go FBX merge no animation and there's the skeleton okay now if I just scrub over the animation we can see that skeleton is not affected by that at all okay so we've got the character characterized motion builder now understands this character figure how to relate other animated stuff to it so let's make that happen um, up here we can see we've got a, a way of choosing the character and we've got a new character called character probably not a best name so I'm going to change that name now uh, right click and rename and let's call it No other reason than I want to be able to see what I'm choosing here. So, our character Mixer Man just makes it a bit clearer. Um, well now we're going to choose the source. Now, the source is uh, really what's controlling our character. Um, and we have a number of options, one of which is, of course, J Anim. So, if I get J Anim to control our character, the character moves back there. I think I can go back to uh, viewing single pane, use a bit of space, maybe zoom in a shade, and uh, just a little orbit round, so we can see the end of the animation. Now this is um, looking okay, looks like the right thing has happened, and let's just see what happens when we press play. Okay, um, actually our character will behave itself somewhat better than the motion builder actor. Okay, so the animation plainly works on that character and we're to the point now where what we want to do is uh, make sure that the uh, points of the animation, the movement, and the rotation is baked onto our skeleton. So we go in the magic menu, bake plot, plot to skeleton. Uh, doesn't look like much has happened, and the proof of that pudding, never a bad time to save. Proof of that pudding is 
when we start deleting the other stuff that's not needed. So in the scene we can see a clear sight of all the things that we don't need anymore. So we've got a Mixamo rig we can get shot of. No, we haven't got a, we've got a J-Anim we can get shot of. Plus we've got a C3D optical we can get shot of. So if I control click the second one, then right click both, select branches, and then right click again and do delete and confirm. Whew, fingers crossed. Always a relief when that works. And we can still see that there is the animation on our character now. Um, just got a pile of bits here. And uh, we can see that that now leads us to uh, two references here. One is to Jay Anim there, and the other is to the actor Jay Anim. Uh, I can't see any reason why we shouldn't just delete both of those two. Just check there's nothing else with the bright blue selection. Right click, delete, confirm. Ah, that's interesting. Doesn't like doing multiples, obviously. Let's see if we can get rid of that one. Right. I wonder if that was what's what was tying it. That's interesting. So it's all baked on. There's no reason why it shouldn't go. To be honest, it's not getting in the way. And the fact that it's not going Seems to me like it's not critical, but I must say that's a new one on me. Ah. I'm not quite sure, so let's go select branches on that. Select branches, and then let's try. Maybe this one just needs to de detach from. Okay, all else fails.
Okay, well, I'm not going to let that spoil my day anymore. And uh, just turn the model back on and check how the motion looks under mesh. Which looks fine to me. Okay, so um, clean up will come in a different clip. And uh, uh, what you learn during the clean up should allow you to do a little bit more clean up before the, cap, the mo cap gets onto the figure. But really, you can't tell how um, critical the motion capture errors are going to be until you really get it on the figure and see where. Or plan where you want the animation to go to. For instance, this is about the end of the usable prowl, and after this point, on that foot, it's going into the T pose, and that's where all the motion mess starts happening. So uh, we wouldn't need to fuss about cleaning that bit up. It'd be much more about just uh, trimming it down to loopable. Of the loopable prowling sort of action. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.